It was, yeah, no, a good while ago, in the mid-90s he died, so it's been a fair while now. You know, I, you know Father's Day is a good time to think about fathers. Yeah. So he never did a PhD, but did get an honorary degree from London University quite late on in his career. And one of my mother's great prides was when somebody once phoned the house when I was visiting and asked to speak to Dr. Merrifield, and you could hear the pride in her voice when she said, which one? So yes, he did indeed get to see that I became an astronomer, and I also got to go along to his honorary degree ceremony and got to see him get his honorary doctorate in archaeology. Well, it's a pretty extraordinary family of father and son, and then son again. Probably the most famous father of them all in astronomy is William Herschel, uh, who was the father of John Herschel, another great astronomer, and who in turn was the father of Alexander Herschel, another famous astronomer. Of course, Caroline Herschel, as we've heard in a previous video, was also an important part of this family. But today, the subject of the film is Father's Day, so we'll talk about the men in the family. But coming back to, to William, first of all, I mean, he was also a, a father in the metaphorical sense of the word. The father of modern stellar astronomy, um, builder of giant telescopes, noted composer, um, discoverer of planets, he discovered the planet Uranus and two of its moons. He was sort of the first person who surveyed the sky in a systematic way, uh, looking for nebulae, very distant galaxies and other fuzzy objects in the sky. And he was also the, the founding father of infrared astronomy. In the, sort of Almost by accident, he was uh, studying the sun and split its spectrum up uh, using a prism and found when he put a thermometer uh, off beyond the, kind of beyond the red end of the spectrum that the thermometer heated up. And so he postulated that there were some invisible rays coming from the sun uh, that were causing this, this heat effect. And because of that, actually, he's you know, the, the founding figure of infrared astronomy and the, the large infrared telescope that's up in space at the moment is named after him, the Herschel Space Telescope, for that reason. Yeah, so he, uh, he actually only had one child, uh, John Herschel, um, who uh, sort of carried on in the family business, if you like, in that quite actually relatively sort of late on in his life when I think Herschel was in his late 70s, and John, his son, went to visit him for a summer and sort of became interested in the astronomy program really then and really sort of picked up the baton and continued his father's work. And in particular, the main thing he did is, of course, all William Herschel's observations were made from the Northern Hemisphere. And there's some things you just can't see from the Northern Hemisphere. And so the main contribution to this area that John Herschel made was he actually travelled down to South Africa and uh, uh, used the newly established observatory down there to actually make observations of the southern sky and found another couple of thousand uh, nebulae there. And so then these two sets of nebulae were combined to really sort of map the whole sky. And uh, clearly he was a very busy man because he also had 12 children. One of those, Alexander, was also an astronomer. So probably not as noted as his father and his grandfather, um, but still made many important contributions, particularly to taking spectroscopy of meteors and understanding the composition of meteors. And he was the first person who really systematically tried to study their spectra, to split the light that's, as these things burn up, they give out a lot of light. By splitting that light up into a spectrum, you can try and figure out what the, the objects are made of. Is it common for uh, astronomers to have fathers who are astronomers? It's not unprecedented. There are some cases around the place, but I guess there's also this traditional thing that, you know, one thing that, that children do is that they swear that they will never follow in their parents' footsteps. Well, I certainly know of a few children who have followed their parents into the field. Um, what's much more common, and this probably speaks to the limited social life of scientists, is for husband and wife or partner and partner pairs in astronomy. Um, that, as in much of science, is a very common thing to be occurring. Are you speaking from uh, personal experience here? I, I may well be speaking from personal experience, yes. Was your father an astronomer? No, my father wasn't an astronomer. My father, well, it's strange again, because you know, my father was actually an archaeologist. And, you know, I, I probably reacted in exactly this way of saying, well, you know, I'm not going in that direction. So, you know, that's the humanities, so I went to the sciences. But actually, astronomy and archaeology, looking back on it, are really very closely connected with each other. You know, we're both doing the same thing. Astronomy is not really a proper science. We spend our time picking up the fragmentary evidence that there is out there and trying to put that together to figure out, you know, what's happened, what's gone on. Of course, that's exactly the same thing that archaeologists do. Is your father an astronomer? My father is not an astronomer. He, well, that's, that's not true. He is, he's very interested in astronomy and, in fact, he's, he's classified um, some galaxies for the Galaxy Zoo project. I know he's been involved in that, as have many, many members of the public. Um, but he is a scientist. 
he's a biochemist, so science runs in my family. Um, it's Father's Day, so I'll talk about my father, but I'll also make a plug for my mother, who's a scientist herself. Um, so I do come from a scientific background. I'm, I'm very lucky to have had that support growing up. He, he didn't study for a PhD. He did a, an external degree, so he actually started work uh, straight after school, started working in a museum straight after school, and studied for a degree externally. So he never did a PhD, but did get an honorary degree from London University quite late on in his career. And one of my mother's great prides was when somebody once phoned the house when I was visiting and asked to speak to Dr. Merrifield, and you could hear the pride in her voice when she said, which one? So yes, he did indeed get to see that I became an astronomer, and I also got to go along to his honorary degree ceremony and got to see him get his honorary doctorate in archaeology. We can go back not just one, but two further generations in my family, um, where we do pick up an, another astronomer. I'll emphasize this is purely coincidental. This had no bearing on my own interest in astronomy, mostly because the person in question, my great-grandfather, so my mother's mother's father, died in 1918 at the age of only 29 um, in the Spanish flu, the influenza epidemic that, that, that swept the entire world. Um, but in that short life, he managed to travel from England, where he had been a student at Oxford. He was sent out to India to establish uh, a, an observatory there to take part in a massive worldwide project uh, called the Astrographic Catalogue with the aim of, of mapping very precisely the entire sky. So, in a sense, moving on from the work that Herschel had done. And you are a father. I am indeed, yes. Tell me about whether or not you have a son. I have a son, Joshua, yeah. Is he into astronomy? Uh, I, I bought him a, a tiny little telescope a little while ago, and he's really excited about that. Um, but I think it's just because it's a really nice little telescope rather than being excited about sciences. I have a suspicion he's headed for the humanities, to be honest, because he's, you know, he's, he, can, he writes great stories, um, and, and whenever mention of the science lessons comes up, you can see his face falling. So I suspect maybe he's heading for the humanities rather than the sciences. You've already spilled the beans that your other half is an astronomer. You're an astronomer. Mm -hmm. I know you now have a young one. Mm -hmm. Is she going to be an astronomer? Well, she already happily tells us that the moon and the stars are in the sky, so I suppose in, in some sense she already is an astronomer. <laughs> Given her character, she will do whatever she wants to do <laughs> in later life, and I don't think we'll have a say in it. Eventually, the bright so seven sisters will become six and five and, and, and so on. They will basically all go uh, in, the, in the coming you know, millions of years. It's not going to happen anytime soon. The seven sisters of mythology 